Hi Year 12, welcome back from the trials. We've been marking, we're uh, looking at some strategies and going back to the boxes and prongs to really help you engage more closely with your responses to the exam questions. So my class, you've been over this a little uh, prior to the trials, but we will really be going back and doing a lot more practice of this. You had a general uh, question for text and human experience, both advanced and standard, it was language. And rather than go over that, because we'll be doing that with the feedback, we've given you another just general term from the rubric here, storytelling. Sometimes these are questions that only really have what seems like one key word can seem quite general. But if you actually use the boxes and prongs strategy, you'll see that you can tap in with your prepared uh, thesis points with a lot more effectiveness. So by drawing a box and not just underlining or using a highlighter, you can see that we've, got, we've actually got two main parts, but this invite you to, allows you to put synonyms in here and engage more closely. This whole idea of boxes and prongs is, is about you being able to use what you've prepared. All right? So in my class, for past the shallows, they've been doing their, uh, generally, we've got some variation, but the chapters are on characterization, symbolic use of setting, some of the uh, students are calling that emotional landscapes, the power of the unsaid, or the gothic lens. So. If I were you and I had two minutes to plan in the exam and this was this sort of general question, by drawing a box around storytelling, straight away I'm thinking, okay, this is a textual form question, as, as was your trial paper, language. And it's really inviting you to tap into with your chapters. So, so we would be putting your first chapter we would be putting your first paragraph, thematic heading, characterization in the first prong here. And you would probably link that. The role of storytelling, okay, you've got three. Generally, most of you have three paragraphs, characterization, symbolic use of setting, and you use shorthand, all right? Because you know at this point, you've done your flashcards, you know what you've prepared for. And the power of the unsaid, or that idea of the gothic lens, which some of the students have been working on. Then you would tap in with your, your theme. So characterization, characterization, some of you might have unresolved grief, symbolic setting, this idea of isolation. So really, this is your thesis now, and you're writing it out in terms of storytelling. The gothic lens here, this reinforces uh, this idea of private and or historical ghosts as does the power of the unsaid in the plot line bringing up that that idea of the past ghosts so all of a sudden the role of storytelling is all of the uh, areas of textual uh, narrative and and genre that we've been working on okay to see the world differently so here you could again tap into some of those ideas of themes, family hardships. We see that idea of hardships, dysfunction with compassion. It might be empathy. Uh, and then it's pushing you to have the three prongs to go further and expand. Some of you have looked at that word vicariously, meaning that we experience these, these family hardships uh, vicariously, not directly, and through the vicarious, we're able to uh, learn from the human experiences, avoid the certain mistakes, and see the power of resilience. Again, this will all depend on what you've prepared for. Then, a little word like invite you to. A lot of students might use it once or twice, but if you've got another synonym, all right, 
Uh, it might be this idea, transport us into the world of the text. So then when you're writing your topic sentences as, you, as you're writing throughout the exam section, you're looking at this word invite and then you can say not only invites but transports us into the world of the text to see how symbolic setting reinforces the isolation to allow us to see hardships with new eyes. Another uh, area here is to not only transport us into the world but another synonym to implore us to really go into that text. So that is an example, I probably took a little bit longer than you would, all right, that was probably three or four minutes, but in two minutes when you know your work, you're able to tap in, as I said, your thesis points to the key terms of the question and then looking at it as you're going through and writing should really help you engage closely and, and do your best because in the marking process at the moment, we're seeing some great writing, we're seeing students writing five to six pages, but oftentimes there is that sense that it's the past draft, all right, and, and not really addressing this question. And it doesn't take that much more to turn all the work that you've done, those five and six pages in the exam setting, into something that's really going to lift your mark.